Greetings, stamp sleuths. Today I'm going to be investigating a stamp collection from the Netherlands. Now I have here my uh, 19, uh, 19, 2022 uh, Scots catalog. Uh, it's the latest one I've got. And it's out because of the pure and simple fact that I do not have many of the earlier, if any, uh, Dutch issues. They start with the King William III. This is A1 and A2. I'll see if I can bring it up a little closer. They're in preferent. One's in preferent and one's preferent. In other words, one doesn't have perforations. The other one does. And uh, they are their first stamps. And they're in kind of a teal blue. They were issued in 1852, January 1st to be exact, and are engraved. Those stamps uh, have um, three colors, blue, a five cent blue, a 10 cent lake, and a 15, a 15 cent orange yellow. Um, now, uh, Netherlands is a kingdom, which is why you see King William III. Uh, its currency is in cents, gilden or gilder, and florins. So the earlier stamps, of course, will be in cents. Now, I'm going to move this out of the scheme of things, and you're going to see my stock book come into play. Uh, here you'll see that I have uh, notations made to help me keep track of what's going on here. My earliest issue is the 1852 King William III, uh, or pardon me, my earliest issue is a five cent blue perforated 1872 of King William, and this is it here, and it's perforated. And again, that was issued in 1872 to 1885. The next ones to come were what they call numerals, and uh, these are up here, and they're uh, called numerals of value, and they were put out in 1876 to 94 with a one-half cent rose, which I have here uh, in my hand. I'm hoping you can see that clearly. They do come in different values. As you can see up the top here, I have a one cent, uh, the half cent, the two and a half cent, and they go up to higher values from there. Now, um, the other thing you need to know about the Netherlands or Dutch stamps is that they do several different things. They have what they call surcharge overprints, and they have semi-postals. And they also have postage dues. And their first postage dues came out in 1907. And these are them here. And they're overprinted postage dues. In other words, this stamp came out right here as a regular postal issue right there and then they decided to turn it into a postage due by doing this so if you owed a half cent on your received mail you could do that here's a one cent i'm going to try and do these my hands do not work well my apologies a one and a half cent and a two cent and these are called surcharge and they're surcharge in particular with the postage dues now um I have a, a fairly large collection here, and you have to bear with me. I'm going to do it kind of in bits and bytes by pages instead of by uh, years. I did mention the surcharged, or the semi-postals, pardon me. These were the surcharged, overprints are surcharged, and this is a semi-postal. And their semi-postals, or surtax on these ones, were collected by the Dutch government uh, for cultural and social purposes. So oftentimes the image on the particular stamp would tell you whether it was cultural or uh, social. I, mean, I believe this is probably cultural. It looks like it's architecture related. Uh, however, here are some that show children, five plus five, and this would be for social purposes. So I'm just going to turn the page and you're going to hear that. Now the nice thing about stamps from Netherlands is that they have large sets. They're quite colorful, and um, you can actually get into doing several different collections just based on what your interests are. For example, these are the 1924-1926 gull, stylized gull, and this is a two-cent uh, orange. This set is quite large, and you can actually find examples of this that aren't perforated. They're in perforates. Plus, you can get these as cancelled or as mint. So you could actually get three examples of the stamp in your collection, should you so desire. This uh, Queen, Queen Wilhelmina set here that you see in the middle. I'll try and take out one that isn't overlapped here. 15 cent aqua. They were put out in 1947, 1948. And uh, they're quite an extensive 
collection and they have both the smaller issues and the larger issues and again I do believe I have seen this stamp in imperfect in other words without perforation so again you could get the used stamp you could get the per, uh, imperfect mint imperfect used and uh, then um, a perforate mint as well so you could kind of get several different um, versions uh, this shows uh, this set here uh, this is a mint like the Hitch Netherlands and the owner that I got a lot of these from various collections and you can see here that they were Scott valued at $14 and 30 cents and the owner uh, got it for 70% off at 425 which is why I don't pay as much attention to um, values in the Scott catalog because you get for them what somebody's willing to pay. Now these ones are nice because it looks like a fairly complete set. It starts up at the top and it's going to slide this over sideways with the smaller issues and then goes to the larger ones. And these ones date to uh, 1971, 1972. Also, I was mentioning overprints, and these are kind of neat. That gully show I showed earlier, these are overprinted and they really overprinted it to the point that you can barely make out what's underneath. So Dutch stamps are interesting in that regard, that you can get a lot of different uh, variations. Um, oftentimes, you'll see these. This is a mint never hinged, Satanat. In other words, they're two different stamps. This one's um, put askew on the side, and it's a bit different design. It has a candle as opposed to a Christmas tree. They're both 55 cent, but because they're together, they're different images. We call that a Satanat or Satanat. Uh, likewise with this Holland Dutch stamps, you see this a lot. You see them putting them in the two different um, images or values, uh, and um, they're kind of neat to collect. These are mint, and here's one. If I can get that out with it. Yeah, there it is. These are, um, I don't think they're die cut. I can't tell. I think those are maybe die cut. They're either die cut or in preferred. I'm not sure which. And I don't want to mess with them and, and uh, take it apart. So... The thing I want to begin discussing in my collection is that the pages you just saw, for the most part, were used with a few mint hinged. These pages from below here on forward, these, this one in particular, uh, starts with mint never hinged. And they're blocks of four oftentimes, or singles. And my collection, for the main part, consists of more modern mint never hinged issues. A lot of times they are um, like this, where they have selvage. This is a 1994 issue. And uh, oftentimes they are on blocks of four. So you can collect this way. You could also get a single mint never hinged and a single used of these and fill your collection out that way. How would you do it? Now, I came by these uh, through that nine box lot uh, estate sale. And um, so I didn't really have any choice in how this collection was amassed. It came to me pretty well already put together. Would you just focus on singles, which is what's here on this page? Some of these singles have selvage on them with information. Some of them uh, don't necessarily have a selvage on them, but they're interesting. I don't know if I have a, a one that doesn't. They all look to have selvage on them. Selvage is the edges. Uh, and then again, here are the single issues, and on this side are blocks. And what was neat about this estate lot was a lot of times the blocks were complete sets. So you would get the 80 cents and the two different colors and that sort of thing. So I've got quite a few of these. And um, this is another page here of blocks. Some interesting ones, like up here at the top, you can see that there's one on, on I believe that's soccer. And I got that iteration. It doesn't look right there. I have to get my brain and hands to work together. There we go. Or as a single. So it's kind of neat to see how they treated their postage stamps. And again, the, the blocks continue. Both these pages here have blocks of four, as you can see. And a lot of times they're done in sets, like these two, three here are set. These two are sets. And again, I can't lay claim for amassing this. It came to me through estate. Uh, a lot of times, though, they are just singles. There's no duplications or uh, complete blocks. And again, more pages. 
some very nice images. A lot of these are from the 90s, mid to late 90s. 93, this one says. So it gives you an idea of when these were put out. Uh, Dutch stamps are, are very colorful, in my opinion. Very artistic. Here's one put out, uh, 95. And it's a very uh, graphic type of uh, image with lots of lettering and just interesting visually. Uh, they do a lot of their own uh, flora and fauna. This is a bird set and it comes in three iterations. I don't know if you can see that completely here. There's a hawk there, a face of a hawk, and another type variety of hawk, and then a third one. So you could add these to a topical collection. And speaking of topical, there's um, an issue put out by the by Netherlands that shows the um, penny black. So you could put this into a stamp on stamp collection should you want to. Very interesting. Also, of course, the Netherlands puts out souvenir sheets. And that's a small souvenir sheet. And beside it is another one with cartoon characters. So then you one could get into collecting just souvenir sheets uh, or blocks or singles. It really is up to the individual. Here's another souvenir sheet for uh, June 1996, and it appears to be Vermeer the painter, one of the famous Dutch painters. Uh, getting these back in, because my hands don't work very well. My apologies. Uh, and now I also want to talk back to non-mint. This is my last bit of mint blocks. And one of the things I like to collect out of the Netherlands are their uh, Christmas stamps. And this lot here is uh, what they call their uh, Christmas stamps, their December issues. And they started in 2010 with this one here. And it's kind of a youngster in a Santa suit carrying a Christmas tree. And these go on in depth. I'm just going to put these in my hand. You can see there's different designs. And one could get into building that. Now this could go into just your Dutch collection. Or you could put it into a um, Christmas topical. Uh, and the December stamps I find quite interesting for that reason. Because they all say December on them. And then not only did they start with those, they went to these ones here. Which have December. And as you can see, there's... I have four different varieties of that one. And then down below, I have, uh, these are 2014 December issues. And this whole section here are those December issues up to including to about there. So there's quite a few, and I don't have an exhaustive example of those stamps, but I quite like them. And again, would you collect those in a Christmas grouping or would you leave them in your Netherlands? Uh, again, these appear to be uh, self-adhesives, so one could get them as um, self-adhesive um, booklets, or um, you could just use them used. Now, on this page is a lot of those semi-postals I talked about. You can see that they have two numerals on them, 12 cents plus 9 cents, and Dutch stamps have a lot of these. So you could get into uh, quite an extensive collection just of Dutch or uh, Netherlands semi-postals. Uh, it, it goes beyond that. You can get into, this is an aerogram. It's not in the best of condition, but it's actually a, a prepaid um, printed envelope that you could send in by airmail. And then uh, people cut those out. We call them cut corners. You also can get into um, vending machine uh, or metered mail, which is this. And this comes out of a little machine. So there's all sorts of different ways that you could collect Dutch stamps. Now here are my airmails. Now the airmails go back to 1921. And they usually say Luchpost on them. L-U-C-H-T-P-O-S-T. And show an iconographic image of an aer early airplane. Here's another one. Luchpost, Netherland. This is a Gildan. And then they have some overprints here. You can barely make it out. One and a half cent on an airmail stamp. They're quite lovely. Um, very decorative, some of them. So again, uh, you could just collect airmails and put your Dutch airmails in a worldwide airmail collection. 
or as I've done because they're back of the book and catalog, I've put them at the back of the book in my collection. Another thing I've got a few examples here are of Dutch uh, postcards. Now on the next page here, I've got a whole collection again of semi-postals. It's not well organized because how I did this uh, was these semi-postals of surtax stamps came my way after all of these others and this book was partly emptied so I just kept adding them as they came along and you can see there's quite a lot of them here uh, I, I go back into getting a few mint issues up to including some of these which is quite a large set and I don't have this well organized again because it came to me at different times and here we are into semi-postal blocks and souvenir sheets. So these are all blocks. This is a um, sheet of, uh, what is it, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And they're semi-postals, 20 cents plus 10. And then this sheet again has the semi-postals. But again, this is not as well organized as I would like it. Love some of these bird stamps here. It looks like a buried thrush, 70 cents plus 80 cents, and then they've got a goose there. And again, these are all semi-postals. Now, what's nice about this set here is I happen to have the souvenir sheet for it right there. And again, these are mint never hinged, and this is dated 1994. So you can see that this was issued with this, and I actually have the third iteration that goes to that set here. So one could put this together in a book or on a page like that, which I have almost tried to do here, or it could go into a um, topical of bird stamps because the fact that they are bird stamps. And again, these are mint, never hinged, and they came to me in excellent condition. And it goes on. You can see that this collection goes on. and I have quite an extensive grouping of mint, never hinged stamps. Really interesting um, souvenir sheet here almost looks like a uh, linked I don't even know what you would call that a uh, hunt or a map almost and it's mapping together different artistic and hobbies and cultural events quite neat and above it is another souvenir sheet as is above that and you can tell that these are because of all the fancy information on the selvage and around the edges they're not a block of four which don't have that information and in this case, they actually actually show six stamps, which is quite neat. Um, very pretty, pretty uh, and, and eye-catchy designs. And then on my last page here, I have uh, postal postcards actually put out by uh, the Dutch post office. And uh, those are quite interesting. So that's that. Now, what I want to also discuss is how this collection came to me. Like I said, I, I keep buying lots. The book I just had here is an amalgamation of about three different lots. This came separate, this little binder of stuff here. And uh, I, I marked this page off because it has a selection of postage dues on it that are dated 1947 to 1958. So I wanted to show that for that example. And also to show you that this is another way that you could um, organize your collection. It's not really done by date as much as whoever owned this before tried to do it by uh, sets. And uh, these are done in black stock pages with little um, uh, pockets that they can fit into. And it goes on for quite a ways. Like here you can see they've made an attempt to get this set complete. They're not all complete, but here's another set that they look like they've completed. And that's another way you could do this. And this actually just came to me like this in the folder, which is uh, tells you how varied collection, collecting can be between individuals. It's a very personal thing. So that's it for today. I'm hoping you enjoyed uh, having a look at uh, my Dutch collection of stamps. Uh, if you collect stamps from this country, let me know if you do. And if so, uh, how do you um, organize it? Do you do it by mint, by use, by a combination? Or uh, do you do it in pages like this? Or do you have a specialized album? Or do you do it in a stock book like this here? It's all up to the individual. So for now, hope everything is going well and you're enjoying your day. Bye-bye for now.